Hello and welcome to our service here at Christ the King Kettering. May I just extend my warm welcome to you as well. My name's Patrick. Uh, I'm one of the curates here. Uh, my name's Rob. I'm the vicar and the leader of our mission here at Christ the King uh, to go deeper in our devotion to God as we worship together, closer in our connection with one another as we seek to build community, whether that be uh, in person or online, and further on our front lines with the good news of Jesus Christ that's been uh, entrusted to us over the years. If you're new to us, um, joining us today, you are particularly welcome. The service will last about an hour uh, and will feature various members of our church community. Later on, Eleanor, our associate vicar, will uh, unpack um, the latter end of Acts chapter 4 as we continue our study through the early chapters of the book of Acts. That's great. But first, uh, Anushka's got a notice for us uh, about New Wine United Breaks Out, the weekend that's coming up at the end of the month. So have a listen to this. Hi, it's Anushka here, and I'm just going to explain a little bit more about New Wine Summer Conference this year, United Breaks Out. It's happening from Thursday the 30th of July to Monday the 3rd of August, and all the links for all the sessions will be um, on the New Wine website, new-wine.org forward slash breaks out. Just like our CTK services, all of the sessions will be live premiered on YouTube to try and build a sense of community and watching together. But it means that if you are not free at that time or there, are more, there is more than one thing that you wish to watch, then you can watch it at a later date. Um, one of the great things about New Wine, though, and the Summer Conference is getting to know other people from CTK. We all camp together and it's often where new relationships are formed as we sort of get to know each other while washing up or cooking, etc. People who go to the Summer Conferences have a real expectation that God is going to work and speak to them individually and for other people through his Holy Spirit. And it's often... Um, through these discussions, um, after seminars or sessions, that God uses us to minister to other people. And so watching it just on YouTube, at home, on your own, won't be the same experience. It's great for people who'd like to find out more of what New Wine is um, like and what the teaching and the material is like, but it doesn't build that sense of community. So Mandy and I have volunteered to be community makers, a post that New Wine asked members of churches um, to take on. So we would like to get as many of you to experience new wine in all its glory, but without the camping. And so if you sign up to be part of the CTK gathering, we're going to um, try and have some Zoom meetings for chats just for everybody who has joined in with new wine. And if you consent we would like to share your details with other people that live locally so that perhaps you might be able to have real life gatherings sticking to all the government guidelines outside or sharing a meal together. We also want to be able to share testimonies of what God has done through um, this period, through this summer conference while we are all separated. And so there'll be opportunities for that too. There's a children's programme running for up to 11s and the Luminosity is New Wine's youth stream for 11 to 18s. And again, there will be um, teaching in the morning and activities in the afternoon that you can take part in if you want to, family challenges, things like that. If you want more information about any of the things that I've spoken to, then please do contact Mandy in the office at office at ctk.org.uk or Andy Stilwell, our youth and um, our youth mission leader, for more details about luminosity. And as a bonus, if you sign up, Mandy and I will deliver you your own new wine goodie bag, full with a program, um, an information card, and a few other bits that we're not going to show you until you sign up. So we do hope to see you there. Bye. Thank you, Anushka. That sounds really great. Let's just pray for that event. Father God, I thank you for this uh, 
slightly unusual opportunity uh, to gather together for great worship, uh, for great teaching, but also as we seek to continue to build community together. So I pray your blessing on each and every one who gets involved uh, in that new initiative. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Over to you, Patrick, as you lead us in a prayer of confession. Thank you, Rob. Yeah, we come to the part of the service now uh, when we just look back at the week and uh, just see where we've fallen short. Um, The response to Lord be merciful is forgive us our sin. Lord God, our maker and our redeemer, this is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. We have willfully misused your gifts of creation. Lord, be merciful. Forgive Forgive us us our our sin. sin. We have seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. Lord, be merciful. Forgive Forgive us our our sin. sin. We have condoned evil and dishonestly and failed to strive for justice. Lord, be merciful. Forgive Forgive us our our sin. sin. We have heard the good news of Christ, but have failed to share it with others. Lord, be merciful. Forgive Forgive us our our sin. We have not loved you with all our heart, nor our neighbours as ourselves. Lord, be merciful. Forgive Forgive us our our sin. sin. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and peace now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as forgiven people, let's sing our worship to God.
God, the creator of the universe. That's so amazing, isn't it? When we think of all the wonders of creation, what a great big God we have. A God who created camels with humps, ladybirds with spots, bees that buzz, butterflies that flutter, elephants with trunks, mice that squeak, donkeys that bray, trees that sway, the earth and the whole of the universe. God made the streams and the rivers and the mighty oceans. Do you know that in the beginning, that world, our world was fantastic. Nothing grew old, nothing died. There was no pain, no heartache, no tears, no illness, and definitely no nasty viruses. Until one day, someone opened the door and let evil in. They did this by going against God, by not trusting him, and by doing what they knew they shouldn't do. And then that was it. Our world was spoiled, ruined, broken. But God had a plan, a plan to save the world, a plan to bring his people back into relationship with him once and for all. And here's God's plan. This tiny baby, God's own son, who came to live among us and die for us because he loves us and he wants us to be free from all the evils of this world. The evil that Adam and Eve allowed to enter God's beautiful garden and the evil that we allow in ourselves. And on the cross, Jesus dealt with all that so we can be free. Free to live in relationship with God and one day be with him forever. Now, that's not something we can keep to ourselves. That's something that we need to shout from the rooftops.
Just over two years ago, I fell over a low wall in the garden and hurt my left shoulder. I thought I felt the head of the humerus um, pop up out of position. Uh, since then, I've, I've had problems with that shoulder and I've had to have um, physiotherapy to um, increase the, the movement. Uh, a few weeks ago, a friend of Rob's, Chris Bird, um, was preaching during the uh, Christ the King Sunday morning service. And he uh, felt that there was someone who needed prayer for problems with their left shoulder. Alan let, uh, put his hand on my shoulder and, and prayed. And since then, um, I haven't had any aches or pains. I seem to have a full range of movement now in that shoulder. And uh, I can lie on it when I'm in bed. So I do believe that, that God has given me some healing for, for that injury. And um, I just give him thanks and praise. Fantastic. Uh, isn't that great to hear uh, God's healing power still at work and to hear it after several weeks uh, as well. In addition to that testimony, if you were here watching last week, uh, you'll have heard a few people talking about how uh, the new annex, um, actually Patrick and I are currently standing where the new annex uh, will be, um, but how the new annex will help their areas of ministry. Um, I was particularly struck uh, by Joan's testimony of, of benefits that we weren't necessarily expecting of the new annex, that uh, those people who come to Friendship Club who have to go all the way through the building to the back end, and some of them have limited mobility, will actually be able to have it far closer to the entrance, which will be brilliant. Anyway, we've got a few more of those uh, people who are part of our church community here, uh, sharing their excitement about what the new uh, annex will bring. Have a listen to these. Hello. Ever tried to play a really physical activity with a bunch of teenagers in a really small space? It's a bit like this trying to get a six foot seven bloke underneath a really, really small table. And do you know what? That is what I'm really excited about the new building for, because we're gonna have loads more space to play high energy activity games and stuff like that with our teenagers without having to squeeze into tiny, tiny spaces. A bit like this. Wow, what a wonderful opportunity this new building model offers us here at CTK. As Inclusion Coordinator, I'm really excited about the opportunities it opens up for us to increase accessibility in our ministry and reaching out into the community. We already have our amazing Mishmash service for families with children with disabilities and additional needs. Here, families are welcomed regardless of the needs of their children. Some have equipment and aids such as wheelchairs. Others need space to run around and move freely. Others need quiet space to help them keep regulated and avoid sensory overload. As you can see, the space is key to being able to offer a safe, welcoming and accessible environment. The additional space we offer will enable us to have more flexibility in how our activities are delivered, giving us chance to reflect and consider improvements we can make on creating an accessible space for all. That is across all our congregations, the youth and children's provisions, as well as the various outreach activities we have. I would like to take this opportunity to thank those who have worked so hard on finding a solution and a model that actually works and encourage us all to pray as we embark on the next step of the journey. One of the benefits of the new building will be being able to share fellowship over tea and coffee in the annex following Sunday morning services. As prayer leader, I look forward to this giving us an opportunity to create a quiet, prayerful space in the worship area where we will be able to prepare to come to worship and meet in expectation with the Lord and then to sit in prayer and reflection following the services. It will also be a less distracting and public place, which will facilitate prayer ministry. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord, our glorious King. You give life to everything and the multitudes of heaven worship you. We, your children, exalt your holy name above all else. Lord, at a time like this, it seems like lots of uncertainty around us. So many people need prayers. You pray for those who are unwell due to coronavirus and other health issues, for those who have lost their jobs and means of livelihood, for those mourning the loss of their loved ones, for our health workers, emergency services, and others who put themselves in harm's way for us, for leaders around the world, especially in the United Kingdom, as they seek to help manage this challenge. God, it can be overwhelming 
but you tell us over and over again not to be afraid. Show us how to trust in you and meet each and every one at the point of their needs. Dear God, we pray for all children as they go on summer holiday. Please protect and keep them safe. We pray especially for children that are less fortunate. Please surround them with your love and supply their needs. Please don't let children starve. Lord, we pray for children that are worried about their next year at school. Please reassure them that everything will be alright. Father Lord, we thank you for your church all over the world. We thank you for the Church of Christ the King. We thank you for every viewers from every part of the world. We ask that, Lord, we may remain as one and interact with the wider community in love. We thank you for the innovative ways in which we are able to worship and reach out to each other. We pray, Lord, that we may be able to stand up for the truth and speak against discrimination and injustice. We ask that we may be able to show love in spite of race, skin color or language, that people may see that we are being with Christ. Lord, we just want to pray for scientists, people working on vaccines for coronavirus, and working on better treatment, that you grant them wisdom and great breakthrough in the big work they are doing. Dear God, please you everyone around the world and let the coronavirus go away very quickly. Dear Lord, we pray for CTK 2020 project. We thank you for what you have done so far. Please continue to guide the project team. Lord, please lay it upon the hearts of your people to give generously to this work so that the funds needed will be achieved. And please provide for your people to be able to do this. Thank you, Lord, for we know you have answered our prayer. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Today's reading is from Acts, chapter 4, verses 23 to 31. The believers pray. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and for all that it teaches us. And we ask that as we spend this time in your word now, that you would help us and lead us by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I wonder what you've been up to in the last week. I've actually been up to some fun things, including getting myself a bike. But don't worry, I haven't just got myself a bike. I've got all the other equipment that goes with it. I've got the helmet, the pump and all of those things. I've even got myself some lights. Look, oh, it's not, it's not working. There's something missing. Maybe I'll have a look at that later. Of course, at the end of 
uh, last week and uh, before we began this week, we spent some time together uh, worshipping online and uh, we thought about uh, the verses in Acts before our reading today as Patrick uh, spoke to us then. And we're continuing today thinking about Peter and John, but this time we're thinking about Peter and John returning back to those early Christians, this new church. And they come back to explain everything that has happened. They give their testimony, if you like, of what they saw, what they did, and all that happened. And that's an important thing, isn't it? It's important to share testimony of how God has been at work, of the difficult things as well. And they share testimony of the fact that a man who's over 40, which means there's hope for us all, is healed. They share testimony of people coming to faith, But of course, they also share testimony of the way that they were warned to stay silent. But they couldn't do that because of the truth they knew, because of the power of the Holy Spirit at work in these two ordinary men, giving them courage to proclaim the good news of Jesus. But as they tell these stories to this church, this early church, as well as the excitement of all that God had done, there must have been a sense of alarm at the warnings from the authorities, questioning, fear, and so on. So as these uh, Christians hear what Peter and John have to say, what do the Christians do? Do they cower away? Do they hide? Do they give up? Of course they don't. They pray. It's interesting, isn't it, that sometimes when we face threats, we just respond And actually, we can do nothing else but raise our voices in prayer. One example for me is when I was flying back from a holiday somewhere and um, we hit some quite bad turbulence. And I found myself praying out loud, really loudly. I'm sure everyone on the plane must have heard me. But that was my response in that moment of threat, was to turn to Jesus. That is the best thing we can do, isn't it? But these Christians pray in a specific way. Let me just read you this. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. The message version says it like this. They lifted their voices in a wonderful harmony in prayer. In other words, there's something about unity there in their praying together. And so just as Peter and John were bold in their words and actions, this early church were bold in their prayers. I don't know whether you've ever been in that position where everyone's been asked to pray out loud all at the same time. I haven't. It's just incredible. It's really actually very powerful. Praying on our own, of course, is really important. But this passage reminds us of the importance of corporate prayer, literally body prayer, praying as the body of Christ together, one heart, one mind. We read that they raise their voices together in prayer. Whatever the situation we find ourselves in together or as individuals, the best response is pray. This passage reminds us actually of the importance of corporate prayer. And of course, when we think about that at the moment, we recognise that that's quite difficult to do. We can't meet together in one space. But we can in little groups. We can pray in our roots groups. We can pray with our households, uh, maybe with one other household. And of course, we can also pray with our prayer meetings. They're still happening. So once a month, the first Monday of the month, we have the hub, which of course the hub is about the the centre, the the thing that keeps everything going. Now at the moment, the hub is on Zoom, which I know some people find difficult, but I'd love to see lots of you join us as we pray together in that way. Because wouldn't it be amazing if we were all able to join in together somehow? We see the result of it in this passage actually. There's something about praying together. We have an example of that coming up. So this Tuesday, the 21st of July, we're being asked by Rob to pray and fast for CTK 2020. And how powerful it would be if at two o'clock on Tuesday, every single one of us prayed, wherever we are, that we prayed for the project, that we prayed for our church, that we prayed for the witness of our church, for our community, for unity, for God's kingdom to grow, and so many more things, I'm sure. 
because prayer is vital and there's something powerful about it when we do it together. I don't know how you found prayer during the lockdown. Some people have found their prayer life has grown deeper as a result of this time. For others, it's just the opposite. Personally, I'm probably somewhere in the middle. Some days I find prayer comes relatively naturally. On other days, it's like walking through treacle. It's a slog. I lose my concentration easily. But this passage has got some things to tell us about prayer. Prayer is at the heart of this passage, uh, specifically corporate prayer. And I want to th bring three things out from this passage. The first thing is that these early Christians, this early church, acknowledge who God is. They acknowledge that God is sovereign Lord. Now those words, they're sovereign uh, Lord, are, are about a slave owner and, and the ru a ruler of unchallengeable power. Which of course is a reminder that in their prayers, they are addressing the one who is sovereign. So even though the rulers who are being telling them to do certain things are powerful, they are still subject to a higher power, the Lord God, the sovereign. And so these Christians acknowledge that, but they also acknowledge all that God has done. They acknowledge who they are talking to, the one who made the heavens and the earth. I wonder whether we forget that at times when we're praying that we forget just who we are talking to. They acknowledge that when they're praying, as we are, they are praying to the Creator. That's how awesome our God is. The fact is, God is not aloof, he's not uncontactable. He doesn't have an out of office. He is the one who makes himself wholly available to us. He can cope. Unlike Bruce Almighty, if you've seen the scene where he tries to deal with all the prayers he's hearing, and that's just a little bit of his city. Our God is not like that. They acknowledge that they are praying to the one who speaks revelation by the power of the Holy Spirit. They quote uh, David in Psalm 2, who in that moment foretells how Jesus would be opposed. In other words, they acknowledge that opposition is not new. They acknowledge what Jesus came to do, that he faced opposition, but that, of course, he came as part of God's plan to rescue the world. It's important that when we pray, we acknowledge how God has been at work and who we are talking to. Because that reminds us that we're not alone. It reminds us of God's faithfulness. The song I used in a video for our 50th celebrations last year says this, your promise still stands, great is your faithfulness. I've seen you move, you've moved the mountains and I believe I'll see you do it again. You made a way where there was no way and I believe I'll see you do it again. In our prayers it's important that we acknowledge who God is, that we acknowledge his faithfulness. You could say, that these early Christians acknowledged God as sovereign creator, they acknowledged him as God of revelation, and they acknowledged him as the God of history, the God of faithfulness. So secondly, these Christians, once they've acknowledged who they're praying to, and God's power and might, and how he's been at work, they turn to ask. They ask God. And they say this, now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. That's quite a bold prayer in itself, isn't it? The fact is that they could have simply asked God for protection to keep them safe. But these Christians, empowered by the Holy Spirit, know that what they need to do is to keep going to keep being courageous just as Peter and John have been. And they know that as they pray that God will work and that God is at work by his Holy Spirit. I wonder what your response to that is. How would you pray in this situation? What would you ask? Maybe you have faced opposition. Well, in the face of this opposition, these Christians ask three things. And they're quite surprising in some ways, particularly the first one. First of all, they ask God that he would consider the threats. 
Isn't that an interesting request? Asking God to consider. They're not asking God to remove the threats, but to consider them. Maybe that's a challenge for us in our prayers. It's not that it's wrong to ask God to remove something, but it's a challenge to help us think about why we're in the position we're in and what we're facing and how God could work in and through those situations. Secondly, they ask that they would be bold. They don't shy away from that. It's a bold prayer, isn't it, to ask that the Holy Spirit enable them. And that's a bold prayer that we too can pray. I wonder whether you've ever prayed that prayer. Maybe you could this week. Finally, they asked that God would stretch out his hand, that God would perform miracles, signs, wonders, healings. And that's amazing because they're facing a lot of opposition, but yet they don't ask God to destroy or to tear down, rather that God would continue to act and show more people who he is. In lots of ways, we could say that they are kingdom focused. They're asking for miracles of mercy. We may well come to a time when we face opposition to our faith, when we're told that we cannot speak of Jesus. Some are already facing that. And certainly across the world, there are those who are facing that. We heard of that last week in our service. And of course, they are standing up in the face of opposition. They are doing so in the power of the Holy Spirit, who has equipped and enabled them to speak God's word with great boldness. I wonder how you can ask God for that this week. Finally, after acknowledging and asking, they act. After they prayed, it says, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God boldly. What an amazing experience that must have been for the place they were praying in to be shaken in that way. One writer says that the place being shaken left the people less shaken because they were ready and empowered to act. Maybe um, it makes you think of James Bond, shaken, not stirred, or maybe it should be shaken and stirred to action. The other thing to, to pull out from those verses is that not only was the place shaken, it says that they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, every single one of them, all. That's you, that's me, all. When we pray, God is at work. When we pray, God acts. And of course, as a result, they act, speaking the word of God boldly. So it's not just Peter and John, but it's all of them. Wouldn't that be amazing if we all did that? I love the consequence of this prayer is speaking the word of God boldly. It's a reminder, of course, that speaking the word of God boldly was not about doing a theology degree or having lots of experience, but simply through prayer and the power of the Holy Spirit. Are you bold enough to ask God by his spirit to help you speak the word of God boldly this week? We are often the answer to our own prayers, aren't we? If you're not sure, have a look at Nehemiah and you will see that in his early prayers. So I want to challenge each one of us this week to pray like these early Christians. To ask where God might be leading us to act this week, knowing that it's not in our own strength, but in the power of the Holy Spirit. I also want to challenge us to remember who we are talking to, who we are praying to when we pray, to acknowledge that God is sovereign, he is Lord. So we have these three things, we have acknowledge, ask and act. Oh look, they're three A's. Now of course when I think of three A's I think of a battery, this is possibly the smallest visual aid I've ever used, but I can assure you this is a triple A battery. Prayer is described in many ways, isn't it? It's described as an engine room, as a hub, as I've already said. But maybe today we could think of it as a battery, a triple A battery that keeps us going. And of course, this battery, when placed in something like a light, 
gives it the power to shine. It's not a perfect analogy, but it reminds us that prayer is vital, that it's vital for us as individuals, but also as a church. So I encourage you this week, let's keep praying. Let's pray on our own. Let's pray together that God would act, that we would act, that we would be bold, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Let's pray. And as we pray, we say, come Holy Spirit. We acknowledge you as Lord of all. And Father, we acknowledge you for who you are, thanking you for all that you have done for us. All that you've done in our lives. We thank you for your faithfulness. as we take a moment just to remember your goodness. As the psalmist puts it, uh, to declare to ourselves, to declare to our souls that goodness. We acknowledge you, Father. We acknowledge our dependence on you. And we thank you for your love for us, which enables us to express our love for you. We acknowledge you. And we come to you asking for ever more of you in our lives. We come asking boldly. We come asking persistently. Because we can. And because we know you welcome it. We want to be less shaken by events around. We want to have a stability of knowing that our lives are built on solid rock. That we might be not the ones who are shaken, but those who are the shakers of our community, the shakers of our society. As we pray boldly and persistently, we pray for boldness. We pray boldly for boldness. And yes, we also dare to ask. We dare to pray. Help us to pray. Increase our hunger for prayer. Our desire for prayer. Ever more of you. And when it comes to acting, we, we dare to ask that you would nudge us. Nudge us where we need to be nudged. Empower us. Recharge those batteries that Eleanor talked about. That we might be empowered and equipped to serve you where you put us. Come, Holy Spirit, do your work within us today. And as we pray, as we wait on the Lord, it just strikes me that each of those things may be particularly appropriate for, for you if you're listening, if you're watching here today and you haven't yet acknowledged Jesus as your saviour, the one who's died for you, the one you want to follow. And those three steps of acknowledge, ask and act are actually very appropriate for that. And I pray for you now that you would be able to acknowledge God as your father, acknowledge Jesus as your saviour, acknowledge the Holy Spirit as your guide. And that you would ask 
Holy God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit into your life now, to be your Saviour, to be your Master as you surrender to him. And having asked, you would then act, take that step of faith towards him. In his name, the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. As we think about prayer, a reminder that uh, tomorrow, um, well, on Tuesday, we have the day of prayer and day of prayer and fasting. Uh, I encourage you all to be part of that as we pray for um, the building project to get to the Dustin Advisory Committee uh, as they meet at two o'clock on Tuesday afternoon. Um, please be praying wherever you are um, throughout that day. But in terms of opportunities to join together, we have uh, Monday night uh, at the Ask Prayer meeting. That's at eight o'clock. All are welcome. And part of that, we'll be praying for another building because we recognise that that, that prayer meeting is particularly about praying for outreach. It's the, the project is an important part of our outreach as we seek to welcome more people into our uh, facilities and serve the community better. Uh, but then on two o'clock on Tuesday afternoon, uh, if you are able, then come and join us on the church site and we'll pray around that space uh, from two till three um, during that meeting. Bless you. That's enough for me. We come now uh, to our final song. In our final song, we acknowledge all that God has done. We acknowledge that he is the one who took the first step, that when we were lost, he was the one who came and rescued us. Let's sing.
gifts that gives to us All that we don't deserve All that we cannot earn That is a gift of love The love has lifted me a deep cry in my heart, a hymn of praise to Almighty God, Alleluia. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. I really do hope that God has touched you, God has spoken to you um, during the service this morning. So let us uh, finish today's service with uh, a blessing, asking God for his blessing upon us. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, Strengthen us to walk with him in his risen life and the blessing of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us this day and always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.